What's up guys, my name is Eduardo, and today's video is not a video tutorial, but it's a video on how I like to structure my workouts for myself and also for my clients. For the structure that I like to follow, I learned this from Ryan from GMB Fitness, also known as Gold Medal Bodies, and they follow the five Ps. They created this by watching organized sports and participating in sports like martial arts, gymnastics, and there's always a common theme in organized sports, whether it's a team sport or an individual sport. The common theme is warming up, then you go into your practice drills and whatever else that you're doing, your plays, then you go into some kind of live game or scrimmage, something that you generally like to do because that's what you did to join the sport, you play the game. And then you do some conditioning afterwards. And then lastly, you stretch, you cool down, and you kind of go back into homeostasis. So the five Ps are labeled prep, practice, play, push, and ponder. It's all five P it's all Ps and they're five because that's easy to remember and it still follows that same guideline of organized sports. And I love this idea because everyone can apply it to their session no matter what their weekly split is and we can talk about that in another video but what i like to do for most people and for myself is strength train three days a week and for myself right now i'm working mostly on pressing movements or i like to play around with different apparatuses using preference uh pressing movements so hand balancing on the floor, hand balancing on the parallettes, or hand balancing on the rings. And all that stuff is my practice, but throughout my entire workout, I'm implementing the five Ps of prep, practice, play, push, and ponder. So let's start off with prep. Prep is the warming up of whatever you're gonna do and get ready for the workout session. So I start off with a joint prep, and this is for everyone. And then we warm up for specific drills on what you need to be prepared for throughout the workout. So joint prep is always wrist circles, neck circles, arm circles, hip circles, knees, and ankles. From there, we can go on further, uh, but that's the basic concept. Then you wanna get something that elevates your heart rate and warms up your body, it increases your body temperature so that you're ready and get those muscles primed up for the stuff that you're gonna do later on. So things like top support holds and maybe a couple reps of dips and pull-ups will help you get ready if you're gonna go on the rings. Now if you're doing hand balance work, bear walks and things like that is also very useful because it bears weight on the wrist and warms up the shoulder, the core, and the hamstrings a little bit so that you're ready to take off. Next you have practice. Practice is the most important part of learning a specific skill because this is when you're fresh you want to do this when you're fresh and if there's a balance component to your workout that's what you're going to do and that's why i'm using hand balance as an example so one of my goals for hand balancing is to have a better freestanding handstand on the gymnastics rings and so i'll do a press the handstand and try to hold the handstand for as long as I can with good form. But I can't do that when I'm sore. So that's the first thing I do after my warm up. And if you're trying to hand balance on the floor, you'll most likely do the same thing. Have it first in your workout. If you're learning like acrobatic skills, then you wanna do the skills that are most difficult for you or the ones that are most important for you at the beginning of your workout and then you can kind of mess around with other things later on. But the most important thing always comes first. Then you have your play. And your play is where you can get really creative with things and mess around with the things that you want to do and include. But for my own goals, I like to just improvise flows. I really enjoy just putting other movements together that I don't really visit too often with practice because i kind of have those down already right so if you're working on your handstand maybe get creative with learning how 
to exit a handstand differently. Play around with it, do some cartwheels, do some forward rolls, handstand to cartwheel, handstand to forward roll, or the opposite, forward roll to handstand, cartwheel to handstand, crow to handstand, handstand to crow, handstand to double arm lever. You could do so many different things. And that's what play is all about, is just exploring what you're capable of, what you enjoy, and what you find fun in a practice session. That leads us to push. Push is your conditioning work. This is where you focus on muscle growth, on conditioning, on endurance, uh, improving your strength levels, whatever else that you want to work on, but this is secondary compared to the skill. And play can be your push too if you prolong it and make it a little bit more difficult, right? So experiment with what kind of things do you like to do and that'll make you better at your practice. So I like to evolve, I like to involve things like bent arm work into my gymnastics range training to help me press a little bit easier and get in and out of different movements of my hand balance. Because not only do I want to improve my handstand on the rings, I also want to improve my handstand push-up on the rings, my press the handstand on the rings, and eventually back hip into a handstand push-up on the rings. It's a little difficult right now, and so doing things like dips and front levers will help improve my bent arm strength and my core strength to be able to do that skill. And so you wanna do the same thing with your hand balancing drills. With hand balancing, you need a lot of shoulder strength, a lot of forearm strength, a lot of core strength. So doing things like hollow rocks and handstand holds on the wall, inverted presses, will all help and contribute to developing the physical attributes for the handstand. Now, if you're doing things like acrobatics, you might wanna involve jumps and calf raises and things like that to get your body ready and strong for the skills that you want. Lastly, we have the ponder. And ponder is last, but it's definitely not least, and it's not necessarily the last thing that you do. It's last because you want to self-reflect. What did you do well throughout the workout? What didn't go well? What can you improve on? How was the quality? How was the ease of the movement? Those things are super important to understand and be comfortable and just know how your body responds to exercise. But what you also want to do is be pondering throughout the entire session. You want to be mindful and present. So in the ponder section, I like to stretch so I can self-reflect and I just set a timer for two minutes and hold a stretch for that period of time. And the stretching can be any, anything that will contribute to your skill or your physical limitations that you have. So if you have tight shoulders, stretch out your shoulders. If you need the overhead mobility, then work overhead mobility. Set a timer for two minutes, hold the position, explore, move in and out and pulse while you're holding that position. But the pondering section, the mindfulness of it is throughout the entire process. And so I'll actually do my skill work and I'll ponder and I'll stretch at the same time. And then I'll move on to my play and when I need a rest, I'll stretch some more. And then when I'm doing my push section, I usually just stick with the push and superset maybe a couple things to work on muscle stimulus and increase my heart rate a little bit. And then I'll finish off with even more stretching because stretching is a big goal of mine to get into the model splits and front splits extremely easy. Right? So those are the five P's. So just to recap, you prep, practice, play, push, and ponder. You prep to get ready for practice. You practice with good form at a hard level so that you can be better at the skill that you want. You play to add a little bit of sneaky volume and enjoy the, uh, the workout that will assist the practice, the handstand for example. And then the push is developing the physical attributes for your practice. And ponder is throughout your entire workout. It's a self-reflection and just being mindful and present for the workout. If you guys enjoyed this style of video, I'll definitely be open to making more. And I'll use different examples. I might make one specifically for acrobatics and specifically for hand balancing if that's something that you guys are interested in. 
So let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed watching the video, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to watch more videos like this one and tutorials on different skills. Until next time.